During the 2023 NFL Draft, we had six tight ends come off the board before round three. Now, which one of these guys really fell into the situation to make them tight end one? We'll discuss it next on the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects, part of the part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. And you know you can find me on Twitter at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout over with the Draft Network, your favorite and local running back guru. And I can't talk championship rings and things without my guy, Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find him on Twitter at the Talent Code. Keith, talk to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? This is Keith Sanchez, senior draft analyst with the Draft Network, man, in 2019, national champ. Yes, but you know why we're here, man. Continue bringing you championship-level content surrounded the NFL draft and DP, man. We talked about playmakers, right? We talked about our wide receivers, man. We talked quarterbacks. We talked running backs. But we have to get in those tight ends, man, because this was a deep tight end class, right? We said that this was one of the most impactful tight end class due to the talent, uh, you know, in this class. And we've seen a lot of tight ends fly off the board early. Some names we weren't expecting, right? Some names we were expecting to come off the board. And they came in a different order than what we expected. I would say that, DP. But, man, let's start this off of post-draft, right? Who can be tight end one? Meaning this, that a combination of high-level talent, right? But they also fell to the right situation. So they have everything set up for them to be the most productive tight end. So DP, man, we're talking Don Kincaid, Sam Laporta, Michael Mayer, right? Like that was the first three tight ends off the board. Who do you think is tight end one based off his talent combined with the situation? Man, Keith, I got st- I to got, I stick to the brand. Pre-draft, I had Dalton Kincaid as tight end one, and I got him tight end one after the draft as well. It was the first, he was the only tight end that came off the board in round one, right? That's that's premium draft capital, right? The Buffalo Bills, and then where he felt it, the Buffalo Bills. Dalton Kincaid is tight end one po- pre-draft for me and post-draft. Going to the Buffalo Bills where you got Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis. I know some people shot like, man, they got Dawson Knox, but the key to it, you have Josh Allen. And Dalton Kincaid, remember what I kept saying the whole entire time, he was the best pass-catching tight end in the class. Route running, separation, athleticism, ball skills, all of it. Man-to-man coverage, zone coverage, he did it all. So when I look at putting him in, in Buffalo, it's a perfect situation to me. I think – I'm going to say this, Keith. He's tight end slash wide receiver too right now for me, for the Buffalo Bills, because – like Dawson Knox is solid. I mean, he, he got paid, True. and, and you rightfully so. But I mean, Kincaid to me, I think is that flex option for them. Yeah. Okay. Now, are you, I have to ask you this though. You don't think that Dawson Knox is going to have any effect on productivity, right? Because now we're talking about is he tight end two? Is he wide receiver two? Like, what's the target share for that? And then we're also going into a situation with Gabe Davis, right? Trying to, right. I guess, figure out where he's going to go. So, is there? Not the talent, right, but the situation. Do, do you think that it's still a great situation, even with Dawson Knox being And I think this. I do, I, do we believe that Dawson Knox is this, like, glorified Hall of Fame talent? No, but if you ask the average NFL person, they'll tell you he's a solid tight end, right? And so yeah. would a solid tight end not bite into your target share, or are you looking at the overall situation with Buffalo that it's going to – I guess kind of compensate for the situation and allow Dalton Kincaid to be tight in one. Still, no, I think Dalton, I, I think Dawson Knox is still going to play a part for sure. You know what I mean? Like I say, you paid the guy, you gotta, you gotta play him, right? I, I think, and he and he's been solid for them too. Like so, you know, I don't want to take anything away from him. I just think that when you look at uh, the way that this team has, has been structured, Keith, we we both have said it. They play more like a dome team, which means. They throw the ball a whole lot, even when right. they probably shouldn't. And, and I think that's going to continue. I don't foresee it changing. And the th- I think the biggest thing for me is, uh, okay, like I think they're going to play – to. I think those two dudes are going to play together. You know what I mean? I think they're going to actually play 
together and, and you're going to see 12 personnel, but it, it gives them that flexibility where if, if you feel like Dawson Knox, who I think right now is a better blocker than Kincaid, you can still run 12 personnel, but then flex out Kincaid into the slot or as a Z type of receiver and play him on the boundary. If you want to, you can kind of, you know, throw, put him on the same side as Stefan Diggs, where Stefan Diggs bumps down into the slot. And now you're really changing the way that the defense is trying to defend uh, your offense. So that's kind of what, what, what I envision, because I think both of those guys are going to see the field a lot. And I think they complement each other well also. Yeah, okay, so we talk about the ceiling for Dalton Kincaid, right? Because, I mean, out of those three guys, I, I think that he did fall in the best situation. We always talk about, you know, pass catchers. They're reliable on the quarterback throwing them to the football. He has the best quarterback, right? Uh, Michael Mayer has, what, Jimmy Garoppolo throwing him the football. Sam Laporta has Jared Goff. But the Lions also have a bevy of weapons also. So you have to get a tiebreaker if there was a tie between, you know, the Lions and the Bills situation based off of offensive production. You give it to Don Kincaid. Um, but I, I, I think I think about the ceiling with Don Kincaid, right? And, and this is how I feel. And I'll ask you how you feel real quick also is that, is, could this be a, a Travis Kelsey-ish type situation where, you know, this guy has a chance to, you know, do 1,300 yards just because they're going to put him as that flex option, right? And he can do multiple different things and really just dominate the middle of the field because you have to think that the Buffalo Bills went into this draft and didn't draft a wide receiver. Right. I'm sorry, they drafted Justin Shorter the back end of the draft, but we'll we'll see how that plays out, right? We'll see how that plays out. So you have to think that there's going to be a large target share for Dalton Kincaid, I would think. Like, that's the situation, right? I know we just talked about Dalton Knox being there, uh, Dawson Knox being there, but you have to think that that's what the Buffalo Bills are set up to do. So if that's the case, then, yeah, ceiling-wise, I think that this can be a, a 1,200-yard tight end, and, and he has all the opportunity to be able to do that. No, I, I think that's fair, Keaton. And like I said, we that was a you know, Travis Kelsey's been the comp for him for a lot of people. You came with the comp that I think fit best, and that was Zach Ertz. Um, you know what I mean? Zach Ertz, yeah. you know, ran that Philadelphia offense, man. Multiple seasons over 70, close to 80 catches, only one season over a thousand, but he had multiple 800, 900 yard seasons. So when I look at it, and then the fact of the matter is, we talk about with, with Josh Allen, he, he averaged and last year. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell you, it was down from 2021 because in 2020 run he had, uh, in terms of uh, attempts, uh, Josh Allen had 646 pass attempts in 2021. He had 567, 17 game season. I believe it's around 33 pass attempts a game. So it was it was a tick down from the year prior. But do I believe that they're gonna stay a tick down, Keith? Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. You know what I mean? I just, yeah, no, nah, they they gonna have it. They got to throw they the football. They're going to that thing, baby. Yeah, and they, they drafted Osiris Torrin so they can try to get to run the football, but they're going to have to throw it, man. But listen, man, Don Kincaid, like we said, man, out of those top three tight ends, he probably has the best situation. We'll see what Sam Laporta does. I just think that's very interesting. You know, another Iowa tight end um, with the Detroit Lions. They just had one, and they traded him away, uh, which could have been a salary cap situation. Also, then you have Michael Mayer with the Raiders, which that's just tough, man, because we don't know how he's going to get the football just with – um you know, with Jimmy Garoppolo and that offense and just so many other elements, um, you know, into that. So, man, I, I want to talk about this, DP, because you had a time, you know, you flexed your muscle, right? You was like, oh, who is tight end one going to be? And it's like, yeah, that's how I felt before the draft, right? But, man, there, there, there are a couple tight ends that went to Green Bay, man. We're talking Luke Musgrave, Tucker Craft, almost identical picks, right? Like they were drafted really close to each other, man. I want to get into those two tight ends because I want to talk about if Jordan Love is that guy – what can we potentially see from Luke Musgrave versus Tucker Craft because they both went to the Green Bay Packers? Guys, if you're looking for a delicious snack and don't want all the sugar and calories and you need to give the best tasting protein bar ever a try, and that's Built Bar, Built Puffs. If you're like me, you like uh, healthier and you want to make healthier snack choices, then you don't want to compromise, you know, taste. Built Bar can do that for you. When you look at Built Bar, it's healthy. They taste amazing. The reason why, they're made of 100% real dark chocolate. You heard me correct, 100% real dark chocolate. And, guys, they have an unbelievable, uh, you know, kind of different flavors that you can really get into. And so churro, peanut butter, uh, brownie, cookies and cream, um, you know, different flavors like that. For me, I love cookies and cream, as I've told you many, many times. Went to my local Walmart and got a four-bar box on multiple occasions uh, that really uh, hold me over, especially on uh, 
you know, draft season trips. So you can go to your local Walmart. You can go to your local Sam's Club. If you want to get them in bulk with all the different specialty flavors that they have there. Or, you, as always, you can go to BuiltBar.com, use our promo code LOCKEDON15, and get 15% off your next order. Keith, you talked about it, man. Look, you know, T- Tucker Craft and Luke Musgrave. And then I think, the, the like you said, it's just the fact that they're so close together, just separated by that round and four picks. So it's because it's different if Tucker Craft was like a six round draft pick, where it's like, okay, we know Luke right. Musgrave he just is kind of double down on the tight end yeah. situation, right? But in this situation, you you select them a, a round apart. So, 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 Keith, when you look at this situation, how do you view it? Who Who is tight end? Is Luke Musgrave the undeniable tight end? I know that's your guy, too. He's my guy, too, but I know you you got a lot of love for Luke. Is he the, the undeniable tight end one uh, for, for Green Bay, or does Tucker Craft have a chance? Yeah, I, this is weird, right? Like you said, two tight ends taken back-to-back rounds early, right? Well, this was the second and the third round by yeah. the same exact team. Like that's, I don't, I don't know how many times we've seen franchises execute that, right? Like going back to back tight ends and back to back rounds early in the draft. Uh, but I, I'll go with this, man. I'll go with Luke Musgrave, right? I, I think, and everyone who's listened to the show heading into the pre-draft, you know, like I said, DP got a chance to flex his muscle. This was my tight end one. I really like Luke Musgrave and what he could potentially offer um, running vertically down the field. And so you have to ask yourself this, that if Jordan love is like i said we don't need hall of fame we don't need you to be one of the top 10 nfl quarterbacks to ever play the game of football right like they've had in uh you know brett Favre and aaron Rodgers. like we don't even need that conversation we just need you to be a somewhat of a pro bowl guy right like if we get a, a dak prescott ish type situation out of you we have enough weapons and this team is built well enough to make a playoff run so you look at luke musgrave it's like hey if this is a guy that's sitting in the offense and he's the vertical stretch guy i'm expecting a lot of productivity out of luke musgrave man then you look at tucker craft and what he does right because it's a guy that can flex out wide also right and you you talked about the buffalo bills i think the same thing for the green bay packers that the, the future for them is this that both of these guys are going to be on a field, right? You talked about 12 personnel. So you, you think, you know, it's going to be two tight ends um, and then, you know, maybe two wide receivers and a running back or, you know, it's going to be some different personnel packages. But I think things are going to look a lot different in this LaFleur offense. And I'm expecting to see both of these guys on the field. But obviously, you know, just how I felt about through my evaluations with Musgrave, man, if Jordan Love is any resemblance of just being a, a good quarterback in the NFL, Musgrave should have a, a lot of good numbers in his offense. No, and I, and I agree with you too, Keith, because I, I think, you know, like I said, the, dra- the draft capital is almost identical. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's off by a round, but just when you look at just the upside of what Luke Musgrave is going to give you, a much better athlete, much more dynamic and explosive athlete. But one thing that 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 – that Green Bay really stuck to their loins. They love size, Keith. You know what I mean? They they really like size. Both of these boys, six foot five, 250 plus pounds. You know what I mean? And, and I think with, with Tucker Craft, this I said, I think they 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 mesh well together because both of them, when you talk about 12 personnel, both of them can run block. You know, they're av- they're they're average, around average to, to a little bit better type of run blockers. And with this zone scheme, you don't have to really drive guys off the ball and be super physical and be a pancake machine. It's all about just using momentum, wash guys down, set the set a nice edge for your running back to be able to either uh you know hit that edge and, and take the outside arc, outside rush path, or if a guy shoots across your face, you let him go and you and you wash him outside, and that gives that, that cutback lane for the running back. And I think both of those guys can do that. It's a good size. Uh athleticism is definitely in Luke Musgraves, uh, you know, in, in his corner in terms of the tail of the tape, he gets that check mark. But I do believe that Tucker Craft and him pair well together. And it just I think with, with Luke Musgrave, as we saw down in Mobile, this is a guy you, you can flex out similar to Dalton yeah. Kincaid. Yep. And you can feel comfortable. Like, you know what I'm saying? But if you want to walk a safety down and, you know, you think about Jaquan Brisker for, for the Chicago Bears, a stud, stud safety, who played corner, you know, growing up and everything. He likes to man up when they want to man up with him over there in Chicago. Well, you flex out Luke, uh, Luke Musgrave. 6'5", I think Jaquan Pritch is like 5'11", 6 foot. There's a clear height advantage that's going to mm-hmm. be you know, in Luke Musgrave's corner, Keith. And same thing with Tucker Craft, where now you can kind of high-low read these guys in the middle of the field, and that helps your young quarterback because Tucker Craft can kind of work the you know 5 to 12-yard range. And with a Luke Musgrave, he can hit that 
15 to 25 yard range. You're talking about from a tight end position, skinny posts, over routes, you know, deep over routes, cross the middle of the field, the seam route off of play action, you know, different things like that, quick outbreakers and in breakers, and have those guys give him big targets in the middle of the field. And then with all the speed that they got on offense, man, I think both these guys could be productive, but I, I'm a, I agree with you. Luke Musgrave is, is, is to me the tight end one out of these two young tight ends. Yeah, I agree, man. It's, and I'll tell you this, man. It's going to be some really fun things with Green Bay this year, just them moving on from Aaron Rodgers and seeing what Jordan Love and seeing what this offense is going to do. Because not only did they draft two tight ends, right, they went and drafted three wide receivers in this draft also. So it's like, you know what, we getting every weapon as, you know, as much as possible we could get for Jordan Love. We're going to get it to him. And then you still talk about having A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones in the backfield. So this is one of the most loaded um, skill position groups in the entire NFL, man, just throughout from running back to tight end to wide receiver. Now it's just Jordan Love get the job done. Uh, two rookie tight ends. I like it. I think it's going to be fun. These are both guys with playmaker ability, like we talked about, they're going to complement each other and make some things happen with DP. Man, listen, man, we only talked about five tight ends so far. There's like 25 tight ends taken, <laughs> right? So we have to get into the other guys, man. We have to get into the Dallas Cowboys drafting big school, Luke Schoonmaker, man, Darnell Washington going to the Pittsburgh Steelers, Cameron Latu. Going off the board in the third round, a surprise pick, man, to the San Francisco 49ers. So coming up next, man, we're going to get into those other tight ends, right? And who fell into a really good situation and has an opportunity to elevate themselves based off of the situation. And, you know, they're not knocked anymore, or hampered by a Big Ten quarterback, maybe. So coming up next, man, we're going to talk about those tight ends that fell into great situations that were drafted in rounds two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The forgotten ones is what I call them, Keith. You know, these forgotten <laughs> tight ends that, like, the, the class was so deep. It, it was at one point where all those tight ends came off the first six, came off the board, right? And we, we feel, honestly, we're sitting there and forgot about Darnell Washington as being one of those guys. And Luke, Luke Schoolmaker was someone that was drafted in the second round. That I feel you you talk, you, you kind of segued it. He might be the most underrated tight end in terms of landing spot and just talent in this entire class. You no, know, I agree. Like, in, in everyone who's listened to us, right, we've highlighted Luke Schoolmaker was like, hey, this is a dude, man. This is a dude that everybody needs to watch. Um, I gave him a second round grade, right? I didn't know if he would go in the second round because consensusly there was just not a lot of talk about him, right? But, mm -hmm. man, him going in the second round to the Dallas Cowboys, I think that was a great swap for them. Them not paying Dalton Schultz, letting Dalton Schultz walk, and then getting Luke Schoolmaker, who, I, I, who is a player who I think is a little bit athletically superior to what Dalton Schultz was. I think he has oh, more yeah. juice in the open field. So you can look at it and say that you won, right? And you didn't have to spend $15 a year on Dalton Schultz. You just go get a rookie. We kind of restart that whole clock up for us, the contract and everything. So I think it's a good situation, man. You're going to have Brandon Cooks, C.D. Lamb, and then you throw Luke Schoolmaker into that situation. But DP, the guy that I want to talk about on multiple levels, right, is the Pittsburgh Steelers going to get Darnell Washington. Uh, he fell to the third round. What, what does that mean for him? And what do you see his usage as? Because we know this, man, that he can catch the football, right? But one of his best traits is being able to run block. So what do you see for Darnell Washington in this offense when you take into account, you know, Kenny Pickett, uh, George Pickens, right, Najee Harris? Um, you know, what do you what do you see for Darnell Washington and his role in his offense? I think he's going to be, you know, when they go to um, – what is it, 12 personnel, two tight ends or multiple tight ends. He's going to really help the run game, Keith. Uh, and they, you know, they, they drafted I, I didn't cut ago. you off. They won't cut oh, you yeah. off, but I, I, I forgot about Frymouth, right? A, yeah, as far I was about to miss it. Yeah, I forgot about Frymouth, and you just said that with two tight ends. So, I mean, this is yet another team that we're like, okay, this team may run 12 personnel, right? Like, And I, I wanted you to keep going, but I forgot about that, and that just came to my yeah. mind. I was like, man, this is a trend as far as a lot of these teams with entering next year with two tight ends that they feel really good about. No, 100%. And, and like you said, with Pat, Pat Fryermuth, like this is a kid that's caught back-to-back -back, uh, 60 or more passes since entering the league. You know, he got 60 in 2021 as a rookie, but he had only eight only eight yards per, per – uh, average eight yards per catch. Well, Keith, 63 catches last year, 732 yards, average almost 12 yards per catch. His touchdowns were down. But the point is, like, you have a situation now, like, when we talk about stock, right? Stock up for Najee Harris, baby. Because with Darnell Washington and Pat Fryer, they're two big body guys. 
this is gonna help the offensive tackles, man. This is gonna mm-hmm. help the run game. That's where they I can think. really get be physical. And 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 we both were down in Mobile where we saw Mike Tomlin, which to me, Keith, I, I, you know, I check a lot of things off my boxes, you know, uh, of life. And just watching Mike Tomlin coach, like, was one of the best things that I've seen, you know, in my 33 years, almost 34 years of life, bro. Like, this man was out there engaged, having the time of his life with the offensive defensive line. The way he talked to those guys, the way he coached them up, it gave it gave you just kind of snippets of what you what you would see at a Pittsburgh Steelers practice. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So just watching him, you knew that he was going to adjust the old line, which they did. But then also just understanding he adjusts the trenches again because Darnell Washington is going to help the trench play, whether it's in the run game or um, you know putting them on the weak side. You know, as if if you feel comfortable with Roger Jones one on one with a rusher, but the 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 right tackle has been having some issues, you can throw. A, a, a Darnell Washington over there to help pass protect yeah. and chip, and he's so big and so physical. There's there's clips if you just go to Twitter and type his name in, go to videos, you gonna find clips of him just bull rushing guys off the ball, just just taking them, you know, taking them to the tool shed, right? But also as a as a chip blocker, when he gives that chicken wing, it's Keith it ain't a chicken wing. I don't know what's the biggest <laughs> bird, but dear God, like it's not a chicken wing that he's giving them. So I think you know, and we talked about him, right? Kind of use them. How you saw how we saw like late year Gronk uh seam routes, over routes, just kind of one directional routes and let that big frame and big catch radius really take over. And I I think this pair he pairs very well to pair very well with uh Pat Fryer's. But Keith, I think one of the picks that caught us both off guard based on how we graded them was the Jacksonville Jaguar selecting Brenton Strange in the second. Yeah, round. that caught that that threw me for a loop, man. And and I can't be critical of the player right because it, it was minimal production so i'll say this i don't know if the value matched the pick right but maybe there's a whole lot more potential there in the player but this is also a team that still has evan ingram if i'm not mistaken yeah. i think they, they re-signed evan ingram so once again right we're talking about two tight end sets so if we're looking at the nfl next year be prepared for a lot of two tight end sets that's what they're trying to tell us that there's gonna be a lot of situations with yeah with two tight ends on the field man i I thought Bryn Strange had some potential, seeing some athleticism, but I wonder if this was another one of those situations, like we talked about high lowing, right? And if Bryn Strange gonna work kind of the underneath routes, and he's gonna play the more traditional tight end role, and they need somebody to potentially block, or they, or what if you know what these, like you know, if I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure, right? If if Jacksonville runs like these pistol sets. Right, and he's kind of that like off back, or he's that you know cut back motion guy. Yeah, like an age back type situation because I think that's what his build is like too. Right, and he gets after the run game, and that's also how Penn State uses him as far as you know a lot of this this cut back motion, and he kind of cutting back that backside defender, right, blocking him and everything yeah. like that. So I think about Trevor Lawrence being on the run, and then him being able to be utilized in that type of situation. So while I'll be honest, right, I didn't see the value there. Maybe in this specific offense, right? And that's what we're talking about. Tight ends in specific situations. Maybe in this specific offense, he has value for Jacksonville Jaguars. And so that's that's definitely an interesting name to you know to kind of be brought up, man. But they have I, I would say if you want going with another surprise name, DP, right? Cameron Latu, man, going in yeah. the third round to the San Francisco 49ers. So for those you know know at the draft network, Alabama, University of Alabama is in my region, has been in my region for the past two, three years. So I've watched a lot of Cameron Lyle too over the past couple of years. And what he has, DP, is a respectable game, right? He 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 participates in the run game, right? And then he gets open just enough for the for the for the quarterback to be able to throw the football to him. So when you look at it like that and you think about the San Francisco 49ers, here we go once again. What are we talking about, DP? Two tight ends because they have George Kittle. And so I think this is going to be a complimentary piece. And we know that it <laughs> who commits to running the football like more than the San Francisco 49ers? Nobody, right? So they're going to have Cameron Latu on one side, George Kittle on the other. Good luck being able to tell us which way we're going, right? And I, right. I think that's more of what this balance is. And so I like the player. I, I respect the player. And if he was in the fifth round or something like that, 
I would have been pounding the table to my GM, like, let's draft this guy because he's just a football player. That's how I feel about him. He's just a football player, which is a good thing. Um, Them getting him in the third round was a bit of a surprise. But with them having George Kittle and him not having to be their tight end one, I think we're going to see some fun things out of the San Francisco 49ers as far as run game design and using two tight ends also. No, 100%, Keith. And I think, you know, and I think both of these guys – in terms of Kittle and Latu, another situation where the two tight ends kind of they they mesh well together. You know, uh, you know, both of them are athletic, and you know, Kittle's a really good athlete. Latu is athletic enough. A guy that I think with him, his game isn't predicated off speed, but it's short area quickness and burst at the top of his routes to be able to mm-hmm. get that initial separation. Um, you know, what I mean, I think he averaged 14, uh, you know, yards per uh, catch, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, and, and so you look at him and you're like, all right, I, I like what which you could bring as a tight end too. But I do agree with you. I had him. Yeah. He averaged 14 over his career. I, <clears throat> I had him graded as like a fourth, fifth round, a day three selection, early day three type of selection where it's like, okay, I get value as a tight end two, tight end three, but you're talking about slice blocks uh, coming as, as, as you know, the, the, the type of run game that they run over there in San Fran, uh, the, the play action bootlegs, get him into the flats and you could do kind of flood concepts with him coming from the backside of the formation into the flats. You got Kittle on like a corner, a corner route, like 10 yards ahead of him. And then you got somebody going deep to pull the safeties up, you know, pull the safeties back and keep them being honest uh, defensively. And, and that make, cause it's going to be Brock Purdy. We, you know what I'm saying? That's all, that's all the talk has been. So, you know, getting more. Well, you count Brock. Trey Lance out, baby. You count. Oh, you count no, no. Trey Lance. I'm count, count, that, I'm count, that's count, what it sounds like to me. sound like you're counting Trey Lance out, baby. Uh, you know, I, baby. I want Trey Lance to be the starter, but you know, Kyle <laughs> Pettahan got some, he's got a type. He's got a type, Keith. You know what I mean? So, you know, shout out, shout out to, to, to Latu, man. I'll give a quick shout out to Zach Koontz, a guy that I, we, we talked about, you know, in our Coach Him Up segment during this draft cycle. He was somebody that I really liked uh, in terms of developmental uh, talent. At six, I'll, seven, I'll two this. fifty. Yeah, but the, the the New York Jets, if I remember correct, they have two tight ends on yeah, their roster. Two, yeah, yeah, they, two tight ends that they were aggressive in acquiring um, via free agency, I believe. I, that's the only thing that I want. I'm like, okay, how is he going to get utilized, right, with this situation? But I, I like right, I'm. Squad. Yeah, it's, it's probably going to be practice squad development. And then it'll be interesting because the two tight ends in front of him are more complete tight ends, right? And we know that Coates, what he has to do, he has to develop as a blocker. So it, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And maybe he makes some plays down the stretch, right? As, I, I know you're about to talk about what, like him being another vertical stretch guy, athletic, yeah. six, seven, can run. I think he would have ran a four or five or something like that. So, so yeah, somewhere in there. Interesting weapon for Aaron Rodgers. I, I think that this is, this is uh, you know, I always cross – uh, cross reference football and basketball. If anything, man, I would say you know give him the put him on the uh, the the Yantis Antetokounmpo plan. Get him big. Get him get him physical. Bulk him up and, and, and allow him to be just a physical specimen with his speed, with his height, and everything. Get him stronger. Uh, I would if you redshirt him, cool. But definitely get him stronger so he can help you in the run game. And then he's a he's a cheap option because eventually you're not gonna want to have to keep paying both of those tight ends. You're gonna want somebody to get cut or traded away. And if you develop him in terms of Kuntz physically, um, you know, because I'm pretty sure that the weight situation into the weight room, Keith, that he saw at Old Dominion is vastly different when he walks into that weight room and that right. and that strength program for the New York Jets. So a guy that I'm excited to kind of you know keep an eye on throughout these next couple of years and see what happens with them. But guys, as always, we appreciate all the love, man. You know, like I said, we're talking tight ends, man. So we appreciate all the love. Um, As always, go to, uh, you know, go subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it's available. Thank you all for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. You know what we call y'all, not just family, but every dayers. We appreciate it, and we love y'all for it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Stay tuned with us, of course. Tap in tomorrow. We'll have more breakdowns, positional. Maybe look at some, some DBs. Maybe see her. You know, maybe, matter of fact, maybe we talk DBs from last year compared to this year. Two really deep classes, Keith. Maybe we tap in there. We, we, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it. We'll discuss it off air, guys. But as always, man, you know, in terms of Twitter, you can follow Keith at the talent code. I'm Damian Parson, DP underscore NFL. Come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.